I got into riding, you know, in my 20s, and me and my buddies would like to take, you know, out-of-state camping trips and things like that. We were sitting around a campfire one night, and one of my buddies, he said, you know, this one time I almost did this iron butt ride. I had no idea what he was talking about. I said, man, what's an iron butt? And he said, well, that's where you do a 1,000 miles, 24 hours on your bike. And I said, okay. And I got to thinking about that whole trip. I said, you know, I could, I can do that. And so a few weeks later, I just got on my bike, made me a big loop, and, and got my first what they call a saddle sore. And it was pretty tough on me, but I really enjoyed it. You know, I like doing the long-distance ride, just getting your helmet and just go. And then I did a 15K in a day. So I worked myself up to that, and then I wanted to do a saddle sore 2K. So... I did one of these down to, from my house in Mississippi down to Key West and back. So that was like 2,100 something miles. So I'm, I'm there and, and on an stop trip and I say, okay, what's next? And I said, next trip's going to be coast to coast. You know, that's not much different than what I did to Key West. Knew it was going to be tough, but I said, well, if you're going, who's done it the fastest, you know? And that's when I start doing a little research and like look on the internet and there's all kind of different guys that claim records. Axe the Crew, he had a, I think he was a 3310 and one of my heroes, Greg Rice, has got a 2923. I found the Greg Rice record and I said, okay, well, that's the record to beat. So I started planning it, you know, I said, let's figure out gas stops, let's figure out you know, everything that, that you need to get across the country and beat his record, build a spreadsheet, you know, plug your time in, your average miles an hour, and got all that worked out. And then a few weeks before the trip, I said, Jacob, just do a little more research, make sure you got the right record. And when I did, I found this guy, Andrew Piper, that a little bit faster than Greg Rice. I so at that point, you, you know, you adjust all your times, <laughs> and, and still, I worked it in where I could beat his time, and I wasn't looking to beat it by much, but just just beat it. Got my spreadsheet worked back out, my gas stops adjusted, had to bring up my average mile per hour, and I set out and I went to Florida. My main concern was I wanted to go cross country with no rain. I didn't care how hot it was or how cold it was. I just I needed no rain because. You don't want to be driving fast, you know, in the rain. So that's why I chose the week before Labor Day. I knew it was going to be hot and dry, and, and it worked out for me. I didn't get in anything, you know, so it was hot. It was really hot, but the weather, you know, was good for me. So I ride a 22 Harley-Davidson Ultra Limited is what it is. Got a six-gallon fuel tank up top, and I had this company out of Texas build me some custom auxiliary fuel tanks that go in my saddlebags. So I got an extra nine gallons back here, which... In flight, I push a button on the dash and it refuels. I got it hooked up on a pump and everything. And that at a, say about a, I don't know, 85 mile an hour average would get me about 400 mile stretch. So I said, okay, I got 450 miles. But when I got to really, you know, flying across there, I didn't have enough gas. I wish I'd have had bigger tanks, but I did strap on this little jug onto my luggage rack back here just in case. And I did end up running out of gas in Florida. It's kind of a cruiser bike. It's not race across the country kind of bike. I like it because I got room to put stuff on and it's comfortable. And that, that's why I like it. But I'm not the racer type guy. You know, I'm, I'm not the guy that rides a crotch rocket. I, I like to tour and cruise and see things. But it's really, I mean, it's the only bike I have. So that's the bike I went on. So in my spreadsheet, I built in, I needed to average at 86 mile an hour and have stop one through eight. I had 13 minutes a piece to stop at it. You know, 86 is not that bad. To try to maintain that average cross country is terrible. And like, like I said before, you know, my gas was an issue. I could get up to about 340 miles, but I already had these gas stops playing here, here, here. About two gas stops in, I had to start stopping twice between stops. So that meant I cut my brakes in half from my 13 minutes to five or six minute brakes. So I started out there in Jacksonville Beach, Florida at this little gas station. I get on the interstate that leads you up to 10. And I seen on my GPS, there was a red line coming up. I said, oh God, man, I just got here. I just started. There was about a five mile traffic jam on the I-95 up to the 10. And I said, what are you gonna do? So naturally I hit the shoulder and I just gassed on it on the shoulder and the cars were like right here and the wall was like right here. I come through there, I'm about 70 in that little tight corner and that came back to bite me in the butt later on. I got halfway across Texas and I'm just checking my tire pressure and my rear tire was way low. Pull up beside one of these little 50 cent air pumps, okay, because I didn't bring air compressor and just so happened the way I parked, I seen a nail sticking out of my back tire. I said, oh my God, here we go. So I run in the Love's truck stop where I was, I buy me a little plug kit, pull the nail out, plug it, 
And then I couldn't make the air compressor work. So I done let my tire down like 10 pounds at this point. I go around back where the big trucks are and I couldn't make any of their air compressors work. And finally I, I seen this little mechanic shop down the hill and I pulled up and I'm like frantic. I said, hey man, can I have some air like quick, fast and in a hurry? And the guy's like, yeah, what are you in a race or something? I said, yeah, kinda, I am. <laughs> Coming across there like, like South Mississippi, I got into a fire for about 10 miles worth of really thick, heavy smoke. Couldn't hardly breathe, couldn't hardly see. Come on through there, click along through like when you cross I-55, which is about an hour south of where I live, okay, in Mississippi. And I come on through there and I get to Livingston and my wife had went to stay with some friends in Livingston this weekend. And I said, surely they're gonna, you know, be standing on the side of the interstate cheering me on and whatever. So I, I get to riding through Livingston, clicking on 95 or so, and I'm expecting some people on the side wrote signs saying go Jacob or something, you know, nothing. I get on through in a few exits in Livingston and I get a text message from my wife. She said, slow down. Got it down to about 80 and uh, this white pickup comes up beside me and there's my wife and the passenger standing out the passenger window up to her belt line and directly. She gives me one of these, you know. <laughs> That would have been better than any sign she could have made. So I blew her a kiss and I went on. I'd never been west of Central Texas before this trip. All I could do at this point is just kind of ping the throttle and hold on. Like I say, it's not this 160 mile an hour bike, but it will do 110 and wide open. And that's what I said, you'll either blow it up or you'll make it. I get into where 10 splits off to Highway 8 going down to San Diego. By this point, it's like desert, something I'm not used to handling. And the whole way across there, I, I keep this cooler behind me and stock with water, Gatorade, and five-hour energy. So I'm just hammering these all day. And pretty regular, I, I give me a bottle of water because when you're riding like that, you get very dehydrated. Okay? By the time I take this left on eight, I'm out of water and all I got is at least five hours. And I start clicking along, I'm dehydrated, I'm exhausted. I had a couple five hours left, so I said, let me just get a little bit of liquid in me. That was a bad choice. It just made me totally sick at my stomach. So I'm driving along there and halfway across this desert, I see this little rest area and I'm dehydrated. I was just about to quit, really I was. I see this little rest area on the side of the road and I had this little crumpled up water bottle that I'd put in my cooler and I blew it up like a balloon and I go up to their water fountain. I'm on my knees and I'm at this water fountain and I'm just filling this water bottle up. I'm drinking about four bottles of water and I look over my shoulder and there's this lady over here looking like, oh my God. What's wrong with this guy? I keep going. Get into the mountains there just before you get into San Diego. Come on through to San Diego and I stopped to clock in like this iron butt stuff that I ride with. I stopped at this gas station, the same gas station that Greg Rice clocked in at and got my ticket and I was 28 hours and 28 minutes is what it was. I was so happy that I made it. I was kind of out of sorts at the moment. You know, I, I knew I, I had beaten the record, but I didn't know really how much, but I think it's like 14 minutes that I beat it. And hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's, I think it's a win, you know. I went to Dog Beach and put my hand in the water. Never been to the Pacific Ocean. I put my hand in the water. You should have seen there's people all out there in swimsuits and bikinis and stuff. And I walk up looking just like this, walk across the beach in my boots, you know, and I just Put my hand down in the water, okay. I did that. Directly, I got right back on my bike and went to the hotel and crashed. And when I when I laid down that night, man, I couldn't sleep from the tips of my toes to about right here, my legs just cramped and drawled up and I couldn't do anything. I had a bottle of water beside my bed and I chugged it and made it through the night. I sent Greg Rice a letter and I sent Andrew Piper a letter and got responses from both of them, you know. I was like, hey man, I'm not trying to brag, but I've beaten the record now, so you try it again, I guess. <laughs> you could have used a different bike, but had I not had, this flat cost me about 30 minutes, about 10 minutes, this wrong turn I took, and then my fuel stops, I wish I would have had more gas. I know that I could have cut my fuel stops in half. I could have been in and out of gas station five minutes, you know, that's doable. So. I really think that there's, there's an, an hour to be gained on a motorcycle anyway. I know guys have done it. I've seen your videos, man. I've seen do, guys do it in cars in, in crazy times, you know. But on a motorcycle, yeah, I definitely think you got another hour or so you could trim off of that time easy if you had, you know, perfect run. Packs more water, some more fuel. Maybe I'll try it again one day. I don't know if my wife will like that or not, but maybe I'll try it again one day. 
Between cannonballs and rallies and car treks, I've been on well over 100 road trips, but one of the things that I always see is that nobody else is terribly prepared. And this is not just a jab at Freddy, but generally people don't bring the tools, the supplies, and the things they need to make it all the way to the destination of their road trip. And so I decided after building kind of the kit that I take between cars for the long drives I go in unreliable vehicles as the ultimate road trip survival kit. And you'll find a link in the description below to an Amazon shopping cart of the things that I think you need in order to get there and get there without a tow bill attached to it. So check it out now, buy what you think you want. Let me know in the comments what I left out and we'll try to keep refining it so we can build the ultimate road trip survival box.